Hi guys. So I think it's sensible to get the track all done and dusted before moving on to the other scenics, so I guess I'll need to take a look at Ballastin. And for that I have this. Ballast. I have a large volume of tiny tiny ballast. That should work. Like many aspects of this hobby, everyone has their own method of doing this job. And like many aspects of this hobby, I have my own clunky method to force upon you. This starts with dropping a load onto the track. Then I'll start to spread the piles out over the layout. At this point I don't really worry about being tidy or anything like that. The goal here is to get the ballast over the track nice and even. I then go back and begin to slowly fine tune the finish. This may look tedious, because yes it is, but I'm going over every single sleeper, removing any stray stones sitting on top of them. I also try to level the ballast so it's not creeping up the sides of the rail. In reality, ballast sits quite tidy around the sleepers, and it's really easy in this sort of scale to lose sight of that. This is one of those jobs that you can really lose yourself in. I got in my stride and got the whole layout tidy in about an hour or so, and the layout should look better for it. Well that's the straight track done, but I've got three points on the layout as well. Obviously these are going to be a bit more fiddly than the standard straight sections, but nothing to be scared of, because I know you are. For the most part it's all the same process. You need to really carefully work your way around the sleepers removing any loose stones. And that goes for the inside of the frog and the check rails and areas like that. If stones are glued inside these areas then you'll live a long life of train stalling or stock derailing whilst running over them. Need I even mention the family shame in a situation like that? The ballast needs to be below sleeper level around the switch rails, as they'll stop the rails from moving freely from side to side, or sitting flush up against the other rails. Because the ballast is currently sitting not glued down solid, I find it's not a bad idea to move the switch rails back and forth a few times. You'll get a feeling for any stones jamming its movement at this point. This one's sticking a bit, and the rail's not quite moving the whole way across, so I'll keep adjusting the stones around it until it frees. It's all ready to be set in place now, so to prepare the ballast I'll spray it all down with IPA. This will hold the ballast in place and break the surface tension for when the glue's poured on. I keep my IPA in a cheap spray bottle, possibly the type used by hairdressers actually. Anyway that gives a lovely fine mist in action. The game here is to leave the ballast as undisturbed as possible. Ballast bond can now be poured on. I've used this a lot on my layouts now, and it really is the perfect consistency for ballast glue. I'm not sure how different other makes would be, and in the past I've made my own using the old PVA water washing up liquid technique, but that does give you bubbles. Honestly, without the IPA you'd see the glue sitting on top of the ballast, or sucking it up into clumps, which I really, really hate. The ballast's been left a couple of days, and it's completely hardened off now. 
Before I actually start weathering the track, I noticed on reference photos that the ballast in a couple of areas looks all gummed up and gross. And to replicate that I'm coating it with textured paint. This won't thin as it dries so it hopefully will give the look I'm after. The colours obviously not right but that'll be sorted later, what I'm after here is the texture. This looked ok on the head shunt so I'm going to crack on and add it to the other areas near the platform, where the loco sit before setting off back down the line. Depositing things. The next issue to tackle is something that's been on my mind for quite a while. Grey ballast doesn't look quite right, the colours way too artificial and clean. So to try and amend this I'm going to add washes over the ballast. This is a mix of earth brown and grey with plenty of water. Well it's doing something, but you can see the difference either side of the white marker. One thing this is doing though is undoing the ballast bond, so I really need to be careful with the brush until it sets again. I sat on that as it dried, not literally, and decided that the change was way too subtle. I'm going over it with a black wash now, and this should settle between the stones and give good shadow to them. It's definitely looking more the part so I'll let that dry. One final coat is going to be almost dry brushing on top of the ballast. This is a colour called Fresh Mud and it has quite subtle notes of brown, what a surprise. Which I'm hoping will help the autumn finish on the layout. I don't need to be that careful around the sleepers because I'm hoping it'll add to the final look. How many times have I said I hope in this video so far? Actually that did work quite well, the ballast looks worn and more natural now. Great! So the next job is to add rust effects. I like to use weathering powders for this sort of job as it gives a nice soft blend to the surrounding areas. I'm adding a small bit at a time and I'm trying to keep it as close to the rails as possible. If you do accidentally put too much on, just brush on the bits that you want on, and any not brushed areas can be blown off. To give you an idea of what I'm actually doing here, the left hand rail has had the powders added and the right hasn't yet, see the difference. For the next level I need to mask off the platform edge as I'll be using the airbrush. I've got the airbrush cup loaded with a mix of black acrylic and water, and I'll start adding it over the areas where I painted on the textured paint. Again I'm using reference photos for this job and I was quite surprised where I actually needed to add the black. One great photo was the bird's eye panoramic that I made after the drone video up in Anguernal, as you can really get a sense of how and where the black fades on the ballast. Some areas, like next to the platform, are completely black especially in autumn where the ground's usually wet. One area that surprised me was coming round the bend into the station area. I wouldn't have thought to add it here, but the photo shows it's actually quite black at this point, so there we go. And on to the first actual autumn scenics for this build. I used knock leaves for chorus for the scenics, but after looking around I found green stuff world do a lot of materials that suit my style and that includes the brilliant little leaf scatter that I use on trees and hedges. They also do them in plenty of colours, which I like. My theory here is that if I mix a couple of colours together and sprinkle them over the track bed, it'll look like dead leaves on the line. As Nanguernal is sitting in a forestry area, the track bed and platform really do take the brunt of the dead leaves falling in autumn, so this made sense. 
I think this is going to look really strange until I get the surrounding scenics done, so bear with me. Also, it appears that the leaves tend to bunch up next to the rails, possibly due to being protected from the winds there. So I'll replicate this by focusing in and giving it a heavier sprinkling next to the track. I'll also use a soft paintbrush to adjust their position. Being happy with the positioning of the leaf material, I'll follow the same method as soaking the ballast, with IPA being sprayed first over the leaves. Once they've had a nice coat in and now sit where I put them, I spray scenic cement over the top. And when that's all dry, I'll clean the railheads for the final time. Once I've done this, I'll run a few locos around the layout, and through the points to make sure that the contact is fine and working. Any areas that I find a train stall, I can focus in and clean over them again. And to prove my point, I'll run a train for you, so you can bask in the knowledge that my track is squeaky clean. I must say, I think the track bed doesn't look like your typical model rail style. It's very dark, almost completely black in areas, but I think it works. It is autumn, so the stones are probably wet, and that leaves the finish much darker than dry. But I really like the look of the leaves. I think that when they're all over the platform and the surrounding trees are looking orange and bare, it'll really set the feel of autumn. And look, the trains run well. And that's the main thing, I guess. But as I said, ballasting is a very fluid thing. It depends on the prototype or general look that you're after. But I think I've captured the look that I... It really does give autumn vibes. And once the rest of the scenics are in place, it'll all tie it together. Oh, and remember that I'm taking Corish to the Shrewsbury Model Railway Exhibition tomorrow at the St Mary's Church in Shrewsbury. For what is only a smallish show, it's got a lot of really high quality layouts, so it's probably worth a trip. Might see you then. Cheers.